cancer is a canny foe. When I started in the field, cancer was a dirty word. People used to whisper it. I actually had an aunt who had uterine cancer, and she was literally hidden in the attic. The family was embarrassed that she had cancer. When I was a child, my mother died of gastric lymphoma. And then shortly after she died, unfortunately, my father was diagnosed and died within several weeks of metastatic lung cancer. I defined my enemy at a young age. My enemy was cancer. In the 80s, every patient walking through the door, we know they're all going to die. Okay, very sad. I realized that's really a disease needed a lot and lots of research. Thinking back to where the field was when I started, I had no imagination whatsoever that things would move so fast. I never would have imagined any of this, although I was there at a very early stage when all of this was beginning. We have people all over the world. They come here to work to discover the way to treat the cancer. We do clinical research. The patients that we treat, for the most part, have advanced cancer. They've typically failed all standard of care treatment, and we will offer them novel therapies. And it's not always easy, because inevitably, we get a lot of drugs that don't make it. Non-scientists think of science as rational, but the fact is there are a lot of setbacks in science, and it's not a very efficient process. Often you do an experiment and you think that you're going to get result A or result B, and then you get result C. What I try to do with my team is I try to make them feel beyond the patient, to understand the person and the people that they are making a difference for. I've had cancer myself. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer nine years ago. We started writing a textbook in 1979. It became the most popular cancer book in the world. We were just in the middle of finishing up the 11th edition. And the contrast between then and now is so striking that it just takes your breath away. Years ago, we don't really know what we're looking for. Now we know exactly what we're looking for. In these 30 years, I would say we learn a lot. It's a huge knowledge being accumulated both in the basic science and the clinical science. The Yale Cancer Center has played a very big role in all this. The first chemotherapy was actually given here to patients with lymphomas. It was a pioneering thing to do. We always had outstanding basic science. Getting the science from the bench to the bedside is the trick. That's the tough part. One of the gifts that God gave me many years ago was to be able to work with basic scientists and clinicians together to establish that bridge to help move it forward. I've been integrally involved in developing at least 15 cancer drugs that are now FDA approved. Making the fundamental discoveries is the most fun. Scientists around the world pick up on it and we pick up on their work because it's all part of a big community where people are enhancing each other's ideas. The drug we invented more than 10 years ago is now being used to clinic to treat more than 800,000 patients worldwide. People can go into cancer treatment now with a lot of hope. If you have breast cancer, 95% of the time you're going to live five years. You couldn't say that 20 years ago. 85% of the time you're going to live 10 years. When you extend the life of somebody by just a few months or just a few years, it's not just that person's life that you're extending but it's the relationships that are part of their life that are extending as well. It's a lot of life years collectively that have benefited from those few months or those few years. And that's a beautiful thing. It's an exhilarating experience to be able to call patients up that you treated 40, 45 years ago, to see them as they lived a perfectly normal life, had families and raised children and, and so on. It's just wonderful. Every day I ask myself why I still keep doing this. I think this is really because of hope. We are winning the war on cancer. The death of cancer is inevitable. The death of cancer is closer 
than it ever was before. And we should all take pride in the fact that we've made huge strides. But I want to cure cancer today, not in the next lifetime. I want to see it in my lifetime. The thing that gives me hope is my patients. It's those one or two patients that you can make a difference in their lives and by virtue of finding a drug to treat them, trigger you being able to treat a lot of other patients. That's what we live for. Thank you.